welcome to another water cooling product guide by Performance PCs. I'm PVC's Matt, and today with me I have EK Waterblock's brand new Velocity CPU block. So this one is the Nickel Plexi RGB version, but EK offers this in many different styles. They have copper cold plates, as well as acetyl tops, plexi tops as you can see here, and even full nickel tops. Uh, RGB is an option on both as well, so you can really kind of pick and choose whatever suits your build but whatever you prefer, you can find it in the link below. Today we'll be installing these blocks on an LGA 11 5X board, as you can see here, as well as an LGA 2011, which is also the same mounting system as LGA 2066. So if you have an AM4 board, you can go ahead and watch the 11 5X portion of this guide because it works pretty much identical. You just have a little bit different mounting location is all. So without further ado, let's get into this guide. All right, folks, so we'll be starting with the 11.5x socket installation. As you can see here, EK sends you a whole bunch of hardware, and uh, they actually recently switched to using a Q code to scan for the manual. So this will be on the back of your box. You can scan it, and uh, it'll give you a download for the manual uh, if you do need that. However, if you watch this video, you probably will need the manual. But... You get a bunch of hardware, like I said. Uh, I left in the bag the extra jet plate that they give you. Uh, they give you an Allen wrench to take apart the block, and then these are the posts for X99 or LGA 2011, so we'll go over that later. But right here are the posts that you need for 11.5X or AM4. Uh, they have less threads on them, so that's how you can kind of tell the difference between the two. Uh, they give you some thermal grizzly thermal paste. This is Hydronaut, so it's some great stuff, and we'll be using that. But you also need to make sure you get out the back plate and the rubber gasket that they give you that's located in the bottom of the box. So make sure you pull that out for 11.5x or AM4 if you have that kit. A uh, few washers and springs, of course, for the thumb screws down here. But let's get to the installation. So if you have 11.5x or AM4, to start you will need to grab the metal back plate and the rubber gasket out of the box and you're going to want to flip your motherboard over and we're going to want to place these on the back side here. So to make sure these are aligned correctly, at least on Intel, you can see here there's a little uh, slot or protrusion there which is where you line up the rubber gasket as well as the four motherboard holes that are there for mounting your cooler. Once you have that on, then you want to put the metal back plate on. And if you notice on your socket, there's three screws around it. So there's two on top, one on bottom. That is the way that you're going to align your metal back plate. Once that's on, you're just going to hold onto it, flip your board over. And you're going to want to grab your mounting posts and the plastic washers. So the plastic washers are going to help protect your board on the other side here. And then you're going to take your post and you're going to put it through the motherboard hole and you're going to want to thread it into the back plate. Be careful not to strip the back plate out or your screws, your mounting posts. They can be a little bit finicky, so just take your time and get them all in appropriately. Once you have them all started, you can make sure that they're all nice and tight because otherwise if they're loose they can actually come out instead of the thumb screws when you're trying to take your block off. So up next all you're going to want to do is grab your thermal paste. Uh, as I said this is Thermal Grizzly Hydronaut. This is some great thermal paste that EK provides with the block. Otherwise feel free to use whatever you'd like and apply it however you prefer. All right, now that we have our thermal paste, now it's time to get out your block and you're gonna to wanna to seat it on your motherboard. So before you do this, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your ports are oriented correctly for how you're gonna be putting together your loop. As you can tell, the EK Velocity block does have an in and out port. They're labeled by the arrows. So the in is in the middle and the out is on the outer edge. However, you are able to rotate these parts, which I will go into detail a little bit further on, but take note before you do install your block to have your ports in the way that you want them. But once you have that figured out, you just slide the block on over the posts, put a little pressure on it, get out your springs, put them on each of the posts, 
and then you will need to take the thumb screws that they provided and thread them on to the top of the posts. Once they're all started, you're going to want to start evenly tightening them. I like to go around kind of and tighten two at a time evenly uh, in opposite corners until you it's not easy to turn them at least. Uh, there isn't an exact amount that you have to tighten them down. However, you do want to make sure that the block is seated firmly onto the CPU so you can get the best thermals possible. And there you go. So before we go on to X99 and X299 installation or LGA2011, LGA2066, I want to go over how you actually take apart this block because if you are going to be installing this block on one of the LGA2011 or 2066 boards, you do actually want to change out the jet plate that, it, that comes pre-installed in the block. Uh, they send you two jet plates, so you get J1 in the block, which works for 11.5x as well as AM4. But to take the block apart, you can use the provided uh, two and a half millimeter Allen key or uh, just any two and a half millimeter Allen key. You'll want to go through and go under the block and loosen up these screws. Once you have all four screws out, you can remove the cold plate on the bottom side of the block and this should just come off separately. If you did want to do some maintenance on your block, this is what you'd more than likely have to clean uh, for the fins. I typically recommend just using a toothbrush with some toothpaste and water. Otherwise, a nice light soapy solution like distilled water and some dish soap mixed together also works. But now you can see we have the jet plate here and the stock one, as I said, is the J1. So if you're going to be using this block on LGA 2011 or 2066, you will want to take out the other jet plate that is supplied with your block in the parts bag. And this is J2. So then you'll take J2 and you'll install it the same way that the original jet plate was installed. And there you go. You would then just take your cold plate. You want to make sure that your fins are going perpendicular to the slot on the jet plate and you'll simply just screw it all back together. And you'll want to screw these down the same way you would the block and make sure that you evenly screw down each corner before getting them all completely tight. So as I mentioned previously, there may come a time when you need to orient your ports in a different way than it comes stock. So to do that, all you're going to do is flip the block over, just like you would when you're going to take it apart. Then you're going to want to undo all the screws in the cold plate. So once you have all the screws out, you can remove your cold plate, and you want to grab your jet plate as well. You can set these both off to the side here, and we're going to line everything up on top of the cold plate. So as always, you got to make sure that your jet plate uh, opening is perpendicular to the fins in the cold plate. Then you'll want to take off the metal frame, which actually has the LED strips on it as well, and you will want to place that on the cold plate. So you want to take the block top and this insert apart, and that way you can rotate your block however which way you would like, and you can still keep the LED cable coming out in the same direction if you would like. Otherwise, this can be rotated as well if that works better for your needs. But let's say we had to rotate it 180 degrees. So that way we don't actually have to do anything with the jet plate or the cold plate as they will still be perpendicular and parallel as I mentioned before. You know, let's place everything once again on top. You can get that metal frame and you will reinsert your jet plate and put the cold plate on. As I said before, make sure that your fins are perpendicular to the jet plate opening. And there you go. Retighten down the screws and you'll be back in business. 
All right, so for those of you with an X99, X299, or just anything with LGA 2011 type socket, the install is slightly different, but it's actually just missing one step because you already have your posts that you can thread uh, the posts into. So all we're gonna do is you're gonna take out the LGA 2011 posts. You can tell these ones are different because they have threads all the way down to the little knurled part. Once you have all four posts in, you can go ahead and apply your thermal paste in whatever method you prefer. Once you have your thermal paste down, you can once again get out your block, make sure your ports are correct, and go ahead and seat it on the CPU. Once the block is all the way down, you're gonna once again take your four springs here and put them on each of the posts. And of course, we will now grab our four thumb screws and begin to thread these onto the posts. Once you've got all the thumb screws starting to thread, you're just gonna go through and tighten each corner down evenly and at the same pace. And that's all there is to it for the LGA 2011 install. Well, there you have it, folks. Installing EK Waterblock's brand new Velocity CPU block on whatever board or CPU you may have is pretty quick and painless, and so is maintenance. So if you guys are in need of a new CPU block, I would definitely give this one a look because this is a great addition to EK Waterblock's already amazing line of products. If you guys are new to water cooling, feel free to check out any of the links to our social media down below or shoot me an email, which is also in the description of this video. If you like this video, feel free to leave a like. If you have any feedback for us, please leave a comment. And if you want to see more content like this, go ahead and check out our channel and maybe even subscribe. That's all I have for you today, but stay tuned for more and I'll see you all in the next one.